All right, guys. Uh, hi, I'm Vin with uh, Boris FX, and today we're going to be looking at some really cool sci-fi titles that utilize uh, a number of tools in our toolbox, uh, specifically continuum filters, uh, as well as some sapphire. Uh, we're going to throw a little bit of mocha in there. Uh, and you can see right on the screen, this is sort of what we're going to be working with. Um, we've got some, let's just move forward a bit. Uh, we have a little bit of uh, subtitles with Title Studio. Uh, we have this really cool nebula. Uh, and then we have some other effects, uh, this, this water droplet lensing effects that we're going to be looking at, um, and, and, some other, and some other stuff. Um, our focus, like I said, uh, is going to be on Title Studio, creating these uh, sort of titles that type on, the very simple titles that type on. Uh, then we're going to look at Particle Array 3D as part of Continuum, and that is for uh, this wonderful nebula that's going on there. Uh, we're also going to look at the sapphire warp effect. Uh, this is a warp fisheye effect, uh, so we'll take a look at how to create that. Um, and then if we have time through the, uh, uh, by the end of the, the webinar, we'll take a look at creating this glitch effect. Uh, if there's something I don't get to, or if you have any questions or want to see how uh, some of the other elements that are in play are done, um, uh, there is a project file that will be available with this webinar, along with some presets, uh, so that you can take a look at everything and kind of pick apart what I've done. Um, now, the one thing that I do want to stress is that we are, you know, I am working in AE, um, so you see, you'll see an AE workflow, but I'm going to kind of, I'm going to tune this, this uh, webinar more for uh, any host that you're in. So if you're working in Premiere and you don't have access to AE cameras uh, or masking, or if you're working in Resolve or something like that, everything that I'm going to be talking about today and the workflow that I'm going to be working with today um, is is primarily focused on uh, you know making this e easy through whatever host that you are working in, um, and yeah, and so uh, like I said, there'll be some some project files and presets and uh, some pre-rendered clips that you can play with and take a look at. So without further ado, let's actually take a look at this and uh, start breaking it down. And the first thing that I want to take a look at is this title effect. So here I have uh, the title that we see in the main. Uh, the main effect. Uh, I took took away the background, took away everything else, and now we're just going to take a look at this and see how do we create this. And what we have here is just a simple title effect. Uh, each of the letters kind of pops in, uh, and we've got a little bit of a lens, uh, sorry, a light sweep that uh, wipes across it. Um, so we'll look at how to create that. All right, so in order to do that, we're going to be working with Title Studio, which is part of uh, continuum complete. And I'm going to turn that off. And what I want to do is I'm just going to come up here. I'm going to create a new solid that I can apply to. And we're going to name this titles. And you click OK. And I'm going to go up here to my 3D objects category. And I'm just going to drop on Title Studio. Uh, and when I do that, a default text comes up. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to click Launch the UI to launch Title Studio's UI. Now there's a couple things um, we're going to want to, you know, change some of the text here. Uh, and the first thing that I want to do is I'm just going to delete this, this uh, sort of default uh, effect that's on here. Now I want to create a title, and Title Studio allows me to not only create 3D objects, um, but also to create and auto-animate titles. So what I've done is I've gone up to this folder here, and I've done create a new title container. Uh, and right now, there's there's nothing there. But I do have this option up at the top to create a different type of animation style. Uh, and I, if I pull down the menu, I can see I can create a roll, I can create a crawl, like if I wanted to uh, redo uh, the opening to Star Wars or something like that. I can do zoom, shuffles, but uh, what we're going to focus on today is the type on category. So I'm just going to select that. And automatically, I get this default text that's in there. Now, what's different between this default text and what we saw earlier is if you look down here, each letter in Boris FX uh, is separated out into its own track. Uh, and that's, that's what I like about this is why this is the sort of the preferred uh, workflow for creating titles like this, uh, is now I can go in and auto keyframe or adjust the letters individually as opposed to uh, working with them as a whole, as, a, as one piece of text. So I'm going to go in, and the first thing that I'm going to want to do is I'm going to go and change, go to this text tab right up here. I'm going to change my text. I select it, and I type in warp titles. Uh, now that looks okay, but uh, let's do some, uh, let's just do a little bit of design on this. So I'm going to select it, and uh, why don't we lower the, the font size? Uh, let's adjust some tracking here, maybe spread that out just a little bit. Uh, and let's get a more sci-fi title. So I'm going to come up here. Um, the title, the, the font that I'm using actually is called Anita Semi Square. Uh, it is a free font that is available from the website Defont. Uh, check it out. They've got a lot of great 
uh, fonts for you to download for free. Uh, and I like this one. It's, it's really cool and, uh, and, and looks nice and sci-fi and clean. Uh, okay, so I have the title kind of the way I want it, but uh, you notice here I've got some, some beveling and, and some stuff that just it doesn't quite look the way I want. So let's go, uh, let's go and update that. Let me go over the controls. And I already have here, so in my animation style, I now have information on, uh, on extruded text. So I'm going to uh, actually, you know what, I'm going to go and get rid of all my extrusion here because I don't really need it. And this beveling is a little too crazy uh, for me, so I'm just going to go and reduce my bevel size. I could, I could put it at zero, but it, it does not look quite right. So I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to you know, maybe update that just a little bit. And what you can see is, uh, by putting it in at, at such a small amount, we do have a little bit of beveling, um, and it's you know it's nothing se nothing severe, but it, it looks nice. Um, okay, so now that I have the look the way I want it, uh, let's get some color in here. So in order to create color, I need to apply some sort of material to it. Uh, in order to do that, I'm going to go up to my window, and I'm going to select Material Styles. Uh, this opens up a nice little palette, and I can select from you know different types, different colors, uh, metallic, plastics, anything like that. Let's go over here, and I'm going to do uh, light sea green. That seems like a nice teal color. And if I click it, if I double click on it, uh, all of my text is now updated, which I, you know, is really handy, and I don't have to go in manually. Um, but let's say I wanted to go in manually and change, you know, sort of let's make titles uh, a different color. If I hit, you know, a different color here, it's going to automatically update. So what I want to do is I'm going to go back to my timeline. And now, as I mentioned earlier, we see each of these has its own track. I can come over here. They're all locked, so I can't make any real adjustments to them uh, unless I unlock them. So let's come over here to the title, and we'll just, each track, I'm going to unlock. There we go. And now I can select them. And to make this quick, I can do hold down shift and select all of them. I'll go back to my material style, and I'll just select mint cream. And now the, t uh, the letters that I wanted to... Uh, change the color for those have all been updated for me. Okay, so let's start. The, you know the title looks good, but let's uh, let's get some animation going here. So I'm going to select my scene container in my, in my animation tab. Uh, I'm going to look over here, and I have some controls for my type on animation. Now, if you look over here, there's a little. Uh, this is a tab for typing it on, and this is a tab for typing it off. So each one has its own controls. I'm going to come over here to this checkbox and just enable it. And when I do. If you catch it, and I'll, I'll show you again, there is a little uh, keyframe that pops up here. This is the end of my type on animation. So if I turn it off, you can see that it goes away. And if I turn it on, it comes back. Uh, and what's fantastic is, you know, this is going to be, well, this is going to be pretty much uh, the length of my animation. So from the beginning to the end of uh, my effect will automatically finish typing on by about five seconds. Uh, okay, so let's let's take a look and start adding some some animation to this. Uh, what I want to do is, it, in the original title, all these letters faded on. So I'm just going to come over here to my fade, and you know what? I'm just going to put that all the way down to zero, okay? And what that does, you can see, is now I have all these auto keyframes that come into play. Title Studio, because I'm working with a title container, uh, has said, okay, this is what you want to do. I'm going to create the keyframes to animate that. And as I move across, each letter will now fade in uh, auto animated. Pretty neat. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to make sure that these pop on. They're, they're coming on sequentially. Um, I really want to have them pop on randomly. So right down here, we have the order. And it's listed as forward. So that's going to that's gonna set them up so that they all pop on sequentially. If I just pull this down, I could do it in reverse. But I'm going to set it to random. And when I do that, you'll notice that my keyframes changed. Some jumped over here. And what that does is it says, OK, I'll randomly put these on. But the initial random is not terribly random. Uh, it's just one letter. So let's fix that. I'm going to introduce some more randomness to it by increasing our random seed. Uh, as I increase this, you'll notice that all of these keyframes are now jumping around. Uh, let's say I did something like, oh, 740, something like that. Um, what this does is it reorders all of the, all the letters so that they now pop on in completely random order. So that's pretty good. And if I play it back, um, it's, it's doing exactly what I want it to do. Uh, it is a little bit slower, so I do want to speed up the, uh, the order, the, 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 the timing for how it comes on. 
So what I can do is this. Up here with my scene container selected, I have a, an initial keyframe right here, and I have my end keyframe right here. So this is when the effect starts, and this is when it ends. If I drag this keyframe to about the one second mark, all of my keyframes adjust with it. So there'll be no animation occurring here. It'll all be moved to the one second mark. If I take this keyframe and I bring it back, all of my keyframes that I previously put in here, they're all going to scale with it. So now, very quickly, just by moving two keyframes, I've animated it so that it pops on a lot quicker. And this is the advantage to using the, the title containers. I don't have to manually do an awful lot of this keyframing. I can just, you know, set it up, change the parameters I want, and go with it. Okay, so the last thing that I want to do is, uh, this is great, but I want to have a little bit of motion. I want to keep things moving as much as possible. So I'm going to go over to my first keyframe here, the one that's highlighted in red. And with my scene container selected, I'm going to move from my animation, pre uh, animation tab to my camera tab. So I'm just going to click on that. And this is going to bring up my camera movement. I don't need to do too much, but what I want to do is I want to set a keyframe on my zoom, set it to linear, and then I'll just move to the very end, select the final keyframe, and I'm going to move in and increase that value. I can make any change. Uh, if I want to make subtler changes, I can just hold down the Alt or Option key, and it'll zoom by, uh, the scale will zoom a, at a slower rate. So when I do that, if I play everything back, I now have my text that pops in, and it does a nice slow camera zoom in. And honestly, that's all there is to creating a uh, type on effect. Uh, it's very simple, very quick. Um, and let's show you some cool stuff now. All right, I'm going to hit apply. And now immediately it updates in, in After Effects. And my entire effect here, it'll pop on at about one second. Uh, and it'll be done by about two and do a nice slow zoom. So I'm going to turn this off and turn on the other one. And what I want to look at right now, if I zoom in on the original, you'll notice that I have this wonderful... Uh, sort of light sweep across it. So let me show you how we create this and animate this. Turn off the render, open up the original effect or the new effect, and what I'll do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go straight to my light category, open that up, and I'm going to select light sweep. I'm going to drag it and drop it right on my effect. And what this does is it creates a little beam of light. Let's see if we can move it here so you can see it. Let's increase the intensity just a it, okay, there it is. There we can see it. Uh, and it creates a beam of light that I can animate and move move around. So in order to, I, there's a lot of uh, different parameters for this, but in order to sort of set up the same thing that I had before, it's pretty simple. I can just use my on-screen controls to take my direction, and I can actually rotate where this light is coming from. So I can set it to maybe about 30, yeah, let's do about 30 degrees, something like that. Uh, and then what I can do is just, you know, I can move it around. Um, I can tell it where it needs to go. Uh, so what I'll do, I'll zoom out. Let's set it, uh, let's move it right over here. So this, this uh, little on-screen widget that I'm grabbing actually controls the light center parameter, which is its X and Y position on the, on the frame. So let's move, let's start my CTI right about where all the text comes off. Eh, it looks good. I'm going to set a keyframe by clicking the stopwatch. And then I'm going to jump forward to about four seconds and say, all right, let's move you, let's move the X position all the way across. And now I have essentially animated that sweep across my titles. Very, very simple, very easy to do with uh, Title Studio and, uh, and a light sweep. If I press U in After Effects, incidentally, I can pull up my keyframes. And if I want to change at any point the, uh, the speed at which this animates, let's say I want it to come in a little bit sooner. I could adjust, uh, you know, kind of move where the effect is and you know, have it move faster across or move it slower across. So it's entirely up to you. And there we go. Okay, so that was, that was actually the e pretty easy uh, to create that. And um, we're going to set this aside. We're going to keep it. Uh, we're going to keep it as its own separate comp, and we're going to come back to that in a little bit. What I want to do now... Uh, so if I go back to the original, I want to actually look at uh, dealing with some particles and look at how do I create these, these sort of uh, nebula waves. Uh, and we're going to use a, something called, uh, we're going to use a filter called uh, Particle Array 3D. So let's come over here. 
And what I've done is I've separated out the nebula wave. So I've taken away everything, everything else that's there. And this is essentially what we're going to create. And you have these, these particles that, that sort of move across the screen. There's a little bit of camera motion. Um, and we also have these, uh, these colored regions. Uh, where the where it's a little bit different, um, you know, we got the little orange mixed in with our blue. So let's show you how to let me show you how to create something like this. Turn this off. Um, again, I'm going to go and I'm going to create a new solid layer. Uh, we'll name it particles. Click OK, and then I'm just going to come over and I'm going to add particle array 3D. And what I have here is this is sort of a nice array of 10 by 10 particles that we, we have here and they're all kind of lined up nicely and if I move there's a built-in camera here so if I kind of orbit around just to see what we're looking at uh, you can see that not only is it uh, 10 by 10 particles but I've got three different layers of particles uh, stacked on top of each other and that's going to come into play in just a little bit but what I want to do here um, is I want to take a look and I want to say, okay, I want some dust. And right now I have my, my particles are basically these shaded spheres. So I'm going to go into the particle group and let's start changing some stuff around. First off, let's change the particles to points. And that gives it these nice little dots that are there. And it changes all of them all the way back. And then let's go in here. I can change my color if I want. Um, I like blue. That's sort of my favorite color. So let's make it a nice little cyan. I uh, will do that. And then what I want to do is I do have the ability to control the size in general, so I can increase it or I can decrease it. Um, but you'll notice that as I increase or decrease, uh, it's, it's controlling them all at once. And I don't want things to be uniform. Um, I want to create some level of uh, some variables in there and just you know, sort of some texture and stuff like that. So what I can do is actually go to the size variance. And as I increase this, let me zoom in here. As I increase this, you'll notice that some of the particles are taking on a different size. And what this does is if I crank this all the way to 100, every particle that's in this array will be either 8 points in size or less. It, random, it randomizes it. So you'll have some that are 8, you know, eight points, some that are maybe 7.5, but you have some that are down here at like you know 1.1 or something like that. So let's, I don't want it to go too crazy, but let's just, let me pull it back. So if I do like maybe 50% or something like that, half of the particles are at least eight, size eight or, or lower. Uh, and that's a nice way of just creating some, a little bit of texture that's in there. Okay, so the next thing that I need to do is I need to go and increase the amount that are, amount of particles that are included here. So in order to do that, let's uh, stop, playing with the shape of the particles, and let's look at our array. So what we have here, our, our array is laid out as a grid, and we control the number of particles along the x-axis, which is all the particles uh, that are in a row versus all the particles that are in a column, and then all the particles that are stacked on top of each other. So when I rotated it, uh, you saw that there were you know three layers of, of particles. Uh, if I increase the number of particles along my rows, we'll start to see that we now have additional rows here. They become more defined. There's lots more particles. If I increase the number of Y, you'll start to see that now I'm getting these nice sort of grid and lattice shape um, effects. And you can, you, know, you can increase these as much as you want. Um, obviously, the more particles you have, uh, the slower, you know, the, the longer it's going to take to render. So let's just, for our purposes, you know, let's, uh, let's get some of these under 50 maybe. OK, somewhere around this. This. So we had a nice sort of array of particles. Um, particle Z, like I said, was is is sort of the the layers that are stacked on each other. So if I rotate this again, and I increase any of my X or Y particles, all the particles in an individual layer sort of start to uh, increase together. If I increase the particle Z, we're going to start stacking on new layers in this array. Um, so while, you know, I sort of cautioned you before of not, you know, increasing, and I want to be aware of like how many particles I have in this array, uh, in each layer, every time I increase the Z, it's the number of particles that I actually am working with on screen is increasing exponentially. Um, so this is the one that, you know, I want to be careful about if I'm uh, creating a project that has lots and lots of particles in it. Uh, that's the one that's going to become the most uh, render sensitive. Okay. So let's reset our camera. We'll look at it straight on. 
And what I need to do in order to create, uh, let me turn on my nebula. In order to create this, I need to get my array to be much larger than, than what I've, uh, you know, what I currently have. So in order to do that, I can just come over here and work with the master scale. And by scaling the x, y, and z, it's cr it's basically scaling the distance between my columns, or scaling the distance between uh, the the different rows that are there or scaling the distance between whichever uh, the individual arrays that are aligned up. So, and of course the master scale will increase, will increase everything. Uh, so I can just basically go in here and make a couple of adjustments. Uh, let's increase it so that my effect is larger than what I need to do. And we'll pull the, uh, we'll pull it forward so that we have a distance between each of them. Uh, and then we can just kind of update it so that it's it's all nice and, and and set up like that. So what I've done now is, of course, I've I've sort of increased the scale of of everything. And what I need to do now is I'm trying to create a nebula. And nebulas, by their very nature, are uh, sort of they're 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 all over the place. They're flowing. And what I have now is sort of really this mathematical. Everything's in a neat line. All my lines, you know. Everything's in its place and in a line, and I need to start giving this more randomness, more texture. So I'm going to close my array, and what I want to look at, let's, let's actually, before I even do that, let's look back at the original nebula. And there's a couple things that are happening here. I want to create this, this sensation that not all of these particles are in a straight line, but in addition to that, I also want to start twisting it and creating this motion. Um, so the big things we have to do is figure out how to move the particles, uh, to twist the entire array into different shapes to distort it, uh, and to also create some motion. And so what we're going to do is we have three different parameter groups down here, four different parameter groups, dispersion, twist, shift, and fractal noise. So let's look at each of those and see how we get from this sort of geometric shape into something more organic. First, I'm going to go to dispersion. And dispersion is, is really simple. All it does is as I increase my dispersion, it starts to pull those particles out of their line. They're still lined up in their array, but they're just sort of stepping a little bit to the left or the right. Uh, and if I crank it up all the way, I really get this just sort of, you know, star field effect. Um, but if I were to, say, for example, just nudge it a little bit, I now start to get, hey, we're still in a line. We still have some structure here, but it's a little bit out of place. Additionally, if I were to come in here, this is the fun one. If I go into twist, what I can do is I can then start twisting my array. So what it does, if you imagine, is that the array still stays the same and all these things are still, all these particles are still in their lines. But what's happening is, is if you imagine I'm wringing out a washcloth, it's taking it from the left and the right in, the, in this case and just twisting that array around a central point. So I can twist it along the, uh, the x-axis. I could even come in, twist it along the y-axis so that it's now twisting from the top. Uh, I could even twist it along the z-axis to create these interesting sort of latticework patterns. For this effect, I'll just go for the, for the y. That seems nice. It's twisting from the top and the bottom, and we have this nice horizon. But you'll notice that I'm twisting, and it's, everything is sort of centered. So what I want to do is I want to actually start shifting that so that it's not quite so equal. If I change my shift master, oops, excuse me. If I change my shift x, I can move it to the left and to the to the right. I can change it where it is up or down, and you'll notice that it these particles are in 3D space, so they are, you know, moving closer and further away from the camera. Um, so let's just let's just move this. We don't have to do it too much, but let's let's move it a little bit so it's slightly off center. Okay, that looks good. Um, okay. Lastly, what I want to do is start adding some movement to this. And right now, if I were to play this back, nothing's happening. It's just sort of a grid. It's sitting there. We've twisted it. We've pushed the particles around a bit. But we need to, you know, sort of create some, some movement in here. And to do that, we're going to use fractal noise. So I'm going to open this up. And if I increase the amplitude, it's going to create sort of this wavy pattern. So if I, let me just uh, kind of crank that up so you can see what's going on. So by doing that, if I play that back, we're going to see that all these particles are now moving, and you can see that there's, there's sort of this wave pattern that's going through it. The higher your amplitude, the more intense that wave is going to be. If you want to change the frequency, which is how sharp and 
uh, pointed those are, you can always bring down the noise frequency. And this is kind of cool because what I can do is I can up the amplitude so that there's movement, but I can decrease my noise frequency and say, okay, I want that movement, but I still want to be able to see some of that structure. So if I were to decrease my noise frequency and maybe decrease the amount that it's moving along the X axis, I can then create these sort of wavy patterns. And now I've got a little bit more contra uh, control over it. Um, I'm seeing more of a, a sort of an undulating wave pattern. Uh, it is moving a little bit fast if I play this back for my nebula. So what I could do here is actually if there's an auto evolve speed, if I were to just pull that down, bring it, let's just bring it way down. If I were to bring it down to zero, it wouldn't move. But if I were to, let's say, oh, that, that's fine, 17, I can come in here, and now these pat these waves are going to actually fluctuate throughout this uh, throughout this um, nebula at a slower speed. So let's take a look at that. And there you go. You have a much more gradual uh, pattern there. So what we have here is, okay, everything's moving up and down. It sort of looks like they're, they're in the ocean. Uh, let's change the direction as to how they move. I can adjust the noise character to keep that smooth like a wave, or I can make it spiky, you know, have it jump around a little bit uh, and create unique patterns like that. What I want to go is whippy. And I like this one because what we have, that's what's going on with a whip, is that your particles will stay linked at the, at the very end. So at the very start of the array, they will stay in that position. And then every particle that moves will move sequentially so that it creates this nice whip where it's like it, 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 it's at a central point and then it, the, the wave moves out from that central point. Uh, and that, that's what kind of creates sort of the look that we had in the, um, in the main nebula. But just as I did with the size, I don't want all of these, all my, all my parts of the array moving at the same time. I want to create some variance as to when they move. And again, like with size, I, had the, I have a variance offset. And I can kind of increase this as I sort of crank it up here. Uh, they'll all start to move at their own pace, but each one will stay in a line uh, or sort of in that ordered structure. Uh, and that's, that's very, very cool. Uh, and that creates this nice whipping effect. Now, the last thing that I want to do is introduce some, some uh, camera motion into that. And I am working in, in After Effects. And if, if After Effects is where you are currently working, um, it is possible to simply just you know work with the After Effects camera to, I've created a camera here, I have my nebula, um, sort of just copy of what we did. Uh, and I can select, create an, a camera in After Effects, enable the comp camera in the effect, uh, and then go through with my you know rotation tool and, and, and sort of work with this whole thing in, in 3D space. Um, but if I have someone who's working in Premiere or Resolve, you know, that's obviously not going to work. Uh, so what I can do is if I go over here, uh, Particle Array 3D does have a built-in camera where I can sit here and I can go to the orbit and I can basically just sort of keyframe the position and create animations where I'm moving it in 3D space uh, like that. And we can just, you know, rotate it, tumble it, all that stuff. I can update my field of view uh, so that I'm looking at it from a different, you know, different perspective. I can even, uh, you know, After Effects cameras will do depth of field. There is a depth of field button here. Uh, I can enable that. I can, you know, change my focus, focal distance, uh, change my aperture, and and really start to create some interesting depth uh, of field so that not everything is in focus. Um, so if you're working in AE, you can work with AE cameras uh, pretty easily. If you're working outside of AE, you can work natively within uh, your specific host to sort of create uh, depth of field and, and 3D movement. Okay, so with that in mind, I do want to take a moment to take a look at some of the coloring that we have here. Uh, we'll touch on it briefly. I do want to, I'm cognizant of the time, and I do want to make sure that we have enough uh, time to talk about some of the, the warping effects that are there. Um, but one of the things that uh, I, I did was I saved off. Uh, let me just turn off all of this. So what I did was I have in, in uh, I copied basically the particles and uh, you can actually download this. I included this with the uh, the webinar. Is if I wanted to, I can load a um, 
load a preset. And so I've saved off the preset, uh, and that is the Nebula effect that uh, I used for the official uh, project. And it even has, if I select the, if I press U, I can see all the keyframes and the animation of the camera position um, and all that so that we get some nice movement going through there. What I want to do is I want to add, um, basically create some volumetric lights. And I'm just going to turn this on and show you uh, sort of what I did here. Uh, let's do some volumetric lighting. We'll do some color glow. Um, now the color glow is essentially, actually, so what we'll do is I'll show you how to create sort of those, those little pattern areas. Um, again, you know, a lot of this is super easy to do in natively in After Effects. Um, but what uh, I'm going to show you a way to do this outside of After Effects. So if you're in Premiere, like I said, uh, I'm going to create a new adjustment layer. We'll just move that right here above my particles. Uh, and I'm going to name this Color Glow. And to that, I'm going to go to my Stylize and add Colorize Glow. Drag that right on top. And let's increase, uh, let's increase my intensity a little bit just so you can sort of see this. And I've got some nice Colorize Glow there. Now, if I wanted to restrict it, to certain areas. In After Effects, I'm just going to go up here with my pen tool and I'm going to create a little mask around here and, and be done with it. But if I'm, wor like I said, if I'm working in Premiere, part of my team is working in Premiere, I need to be able to, to sort of make this work across the board. So I'm going to go here to Mocha, which is included in most uh, Continuum filters as well as the Sapphire filters. Just launch Mocha. And what I can do is just, it's, I'm going to create a real quick you know, just kind of quick mask. I'm going to mask out this region. I'm going to come over here, make another right here. If I wanted to, I could create some animations uh, and sort of move a specific, you know, layer. Let's uh, select an entire layer. We'll move it up here, uh, jump forward a little bit. We can move it down here. You know, whatever you want to do. Um, and when I close it out, well, before I actually close it out, and then what I can do for you know, other filters or for, you know, folks that are working in different hosts, I can just do uh, export project. And then I can just save it as, it looks like I've already saved one, but let's just do it. Save that out. And it saves it as a project. So if I close out of here, that's fantastic. I have these regions. All I have to do is open up my mask. And I can just feather that out a little bit. And that's going to create these sort of shifting regions uh, of color that we see in the larger project. Um, if I wanted to add something like a blur, here I've added a uh, uh, sort of a fast lens blur, which is uh, you know, sort of an iris blur where I can create uh, sort of this nice little, uh, just a nice light blur. If I wanted to do that and I didn't want my whole image blurred out. Uh, this is one of the great re things for working in Mocha is that I can open up Mocha in Fast Lens Blur and I can say, all right, you know what? I'm going to merge this project and I'm going to say, I'm going to use that mask that I just saved. So I can do that. Well, actually, let's not do that. So what I can do is if I start from scratch, I can open up and merge the project and use the newer masks. And now these masks will match completely the lighting masks that I previously had done for the colorized glow. And so this is a great way of like, you know, just saving time between uh, copying a mask from one filter to another or making sure that, you know, whoever's working on your team and a different host uh, is able to, uh, is able to actually, you know, sort of uh, work with your, uh, uh, your project without having to worry about, you know, AE masks. Okay, um, there are some other things that are going on here like vector blur and volumetric lighting. Um, I'm going to, like I said, there's a project that's available to download uh, and you can take a look at how that, uh, how those are pieced together. Um, what I want to do right now, because we are getting close on time, is I do want to take a look at how we assemble this whole thing and how we get to a point where, you know, everything's on, everything's together and we have this nice little uh, lensing effect, because uh, this is kind of what really sells it for me. So what we're going to look at is I'm going to take my Nebula Comp that I've already created. Let's turn this off. Let's go to my project, open up my renders, and we'll take our Nebula. We'll just drop this right on here. 
So here's my nebula effect, uh, and it has sort of the glows and some blurs and, and this, this vector glow, or sorry, vector blur on here uh, that you can pick apart in the actual project file if you'd like. I'm going to drop that into a comp, and then I'm also going to take my title effect, which is my warp titles. So I'm going to have those come out here. And then what I'd like to do is I want to create a new adjustment layer. Okay, and I'm going to name this one Warp. And to that, I'm going to go all the way down and I'm going to open up Sapphire Render. Come down here. Nope, I'm not going to go Sapphire Render. Excuse me. I'm going to go Sapphire Distort. And I'm going to open up Warp Fisheye. And this is a cool one because it allows me to sort of bend and warp and create all these interesting, uh, interesting effects. So what I'm going to do, this is probably the one time that I'm going to say I need to give you the, the parameters. Um, I'm going to need to, so what I want to do is I actually want to set a keyframe for the amount and the Z distance. And in order to create the lensing effect that we have in our title, I need to set my first keyframe here to negative 8.5. And I need to set my Z distance to 0 0.031. And so that'll leave it, that'll create this kind of look to it. And I'm going to move forward about a second, and I'm going to change that keyframe to negative 0.2, and my Z distance to 9, to, I'm sorry, to 0 0.971. And so that'll bring it back to the way I, I want it. And then you have this sort of water drop effect. And that's pretty cool, but the one thing that I, you do notice is that it kind of snaps at the end. A quick way to fix that, you press U uh, in After Effects and highlight your keyframes. Right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease that. And now it'll have a much smoother animation as it comes in. So there we go. All right. And then I want my titles, if I want my titles to pop in at an earlier point so that they are fully on or just part fully, almost fully on, I can just take my title effect. Now let's just bump that back a little bit, move it, and then we go. And so there you go. We're going to render that out. And now we have our effect. And that's pretty much all there is to it. So it's basically three different elements, all very easy to sort of uh, put together. The, the, the nebula takes a bit longer to uh, sort of finesse and, and get right. But um, what I would say is we want, you know, in order to do the, the full effect here that, um, that we see here, um, there are some other things that are in there. There's a glitch that you know you can see that there's a, uh, a a sort of a lens flare that comes across here, and we've got Luna in here. Um, I've included uh, a bunch of presets uh, for the nebula for for some of the glow effects and and the masking, um, and you can download the actual project file which contains this effect right here. Uh, you can look at it, pull it apart, and see how everything works together. Um, I've also pre-keyed some some footage of of the moon uh, and some other effects that are there that you can throw in there to add uh, add different uh, you know particle effects to it and take a look at it um, but ultimately you know when you look at sort of the assembly the three main pieces the nebula the titles and the warp effect uh, that is it and that's how easy it is to create something that is very simple but uh, looks very impressive and very complex um, and that's it that's what I have time for so I'll kick it back over to to Jesse and and Peter for any questions. Thanks a lot, guys.